Hello, in this short video we're going to be using R to find the maximum likelihood estimates and the method of moments estimators for an inverse gamma distribution, specifically the parameters of an inverse gamma distribution. Now this is a follow-up video to two videos. One I have called maximum likelihood estimators of an inverse gamma distribution and two the method of moments estimators for an inverse gamma distribution. The density that I assume we're using this is the inverse gamma de density and one note is that I put the betas or in this case the B's in the denominator now some put that in the numerator but here I put it in the denominator so let's first do a, a sample of size 100 alpha 4 beta 2 and then note that I'm going to generate from a gamma distribution and then I take 1 over x and that makes an inverse gamma distribution but also note that the, when I say scale equal b that means put the b in the denominator if I if I leave that off then it puts it in the numerator or you could say rate equal b and that also puts it in the numerator so let's generate gamma data or you know data from a gamma distribution take its reciprocal now y is an inverse gamma distribution data so g we're creating a function here which is the derivative of the log likelihood and it's actually one step further past that so we take the log of this density first of all we find the joint distribution of our data set and then we take the log then we take the partial with respect to B or beta then we take the partial with respect to alpha and when we take the partial with respect to alpha there's a beta in it so we solve for beta in our first equation which is the partial with respect to beta and then we plug it in it and that's really what this is and, and more detail can be found in the video so that is the derivative of log likelihood and then we take the derivative of that so it's really the second derivative of the log likelihood and we have to do that for the newton raphson method so here are the method of moments estimators and their closed form expressions and i call them am which is alpha method of moments beta method of moments now for the newton raphson it's an iterative process so we take and oh notice here that we take the method of moments estimate for alpha and put it in a0 which is I am calling our initial guess when we try to maximize it and so this step is the iterative process so this is our initial guess for alpha and we put it in here this equation update alpha and then repeat and so this is an iterative process we do it 50 times and that seems to converge quite nicely now I also want to compare it to the built-in function uniroot where we just find the zero of G and I store that in a1 now once we find the maximum estimator of alpha we have to plug that back into our, our estimate for beta now let's examine these estimates the true alpha was 4, the, mic, the MLE is 4.19, Uniroot value is actually going to be the same. Now one note that Uniroot doesn't use the same precision as this iterative process, so if we increase the tolerance on the Uniroot, it would actually equal the MLE, but notice that the last uh, two digits a little bit off. Method of moments estimator is 5.4. That's actually quite high for that. True beta is 2. MLE is 1.8. Method of moments estimator is 1.35. Now what I want to do is both of these converge to the true value as we increase in. Let's use 10,000. A sample size of 10,000 and then and repeat and see what our estimates become. The true is 4, 4.0, 4.0. Of course, those are going to be essentially equal. Method of moments is 3.98.
true bait is 2, MLE is 1.96 and 2.0 for the method of moments estimator. Now one note here is let's this is a sample of a hundred thousand so that's one million so let's do two million and the reason that I'm gonna put in two million I wanna show you the speed at which the iterative process the the Newton Rapson method versus the built-in method for Uniroot I'm gonna run this and you'll see the code kinda of scroll by in that bottom window but notice the pause when it gets in that for loop and, and it kind of shows you how inefficient R is at for loops. So let's run it. So notice it's stuck in the newton rapson method loop here. And it takes, you know, five or six seconds to run. And then Uniroot goes and it, you know, took a half second. So it's much more efficient to use Uniroot than that newton rapson method. And since we're using, what did I say, 2 million, the estimates are actually all very close to the true parameter that they're estimating. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.